we've got a storm detected. Alert! That's right, folks. we got a potential winter storm that could slash through the northern United States and southern Canada as we head towards Wednesday through Sunday. And we're going to have to definitely watch this. And that's what we're going to talk about in this episode of State of the Weather Address. But first and foremost, if you like daily forecast updates, live streams, extreme weather events, and want to be part of a community-driven, cutting-edge network of over 23,000 subscribers, hit that subscribe button, hit those bell notifications. And I do have a video coming out called Rapid Pattern Change, so you'll see an update for that. If it isn't already out, it's probably already out if you're watching this video. So you can check that out afterwards. Now, we're going to start out here in the northwestern United States on Wednesday. This includes Montana, Idaho, and southern Canada. Now this storm is being aided by a high pressure up way to the north here. There's a lot of high pressure building. Also that Arctic snowpack that essentially fell in western Montana, it's very cold out there already, so that's going to help support snow in this area again. And that's going to drive a pile of cold air to the south very rapidly okay so that cold arctic snowy air mass out there in the western part of montana that's going to help enhance this cold front and it is going to be strong as you're about to see here in a second so this is wednesday montana could be dealing with some pretty good snow on wednesday now this comes out Wednesday night into Thursday into the plains, this ejects. Here's your low pressure system right here on the lee side of the Rockies. This high pressure system is going to help drive cold air, and that snowpack is going to help drive cold air very rapidly to the east. And that's going to help set the stage for some snow in the northern plains. The question is, will this cold air be too strong, and will there be too much dry air, cold air that gets cut into the system and that's what I think is going to happen. Sometimes the models will underestimate this feature and we'll flip it back and forth between big snow and no snow at all. But I do think you're going to get some snow in the northern plains. It's just not going to be as much as the models are currently saying. However, it is trending upwards. Now the high pressure moves to the east and you can see the front moves to the east as well. This low pressure system is already up in the Great Lakes region. It moves very fast up into this area. Now, when it gets out into the Midwestern region, this is when this thing is going to really start to organize. The upper levels really look impressive, and that's going to send a response to the surface. This thing is going to get, you know, go hyper mode, and you got a very nice cold front here with thunderstorms, plenty of moisture now starting to get fed up into the system. The moisture getting up into the system will take a little bit of time, but I think by the time it gets to the Great Lakes, it's going to be up and going pretty good. Now, the snowfall, again, is going to be farther north, but we could be dealing with more snow as it tracks into the Great Lakes region. The question is, will it be in the U.S. or will it be in Canada? Right now, I would hedge my bets on the Canadian border and points north with some light lingering snow to the south on the back side. But again, it's probably not going to be thing, uh, you know, blizzard-wise for the U.S., However, Canada, that's a different story. You can see very nicely tightly packed isobars. That means there's a strong pressure gradient. When there's a strong pressure gradient, you got stronger winds. As a result, the cold front moves to the east, and this is Saturday. This is moving into the mid-Atlantic region and Ohio Valley region Saturday and Sunday. A nice cold front in the northeastern United States as well with snow out back here in the Great Lakes region in southern Canada. Now watch what happens as we head towards Saturday night into Sunday. The storm system begins to weaken, but as it does, you'll see these snow bands begin to get more widespread. That's usually typical of these storm systems. They kind of uh, spread out a little bit, they shear out. So you could actually get some back-end snow that lingers in the southern part of Canada, maybe in parts of the northern United States and in um, Wisconsin, Michigan. And we'll definitely have to watch the areas of northern New York. I don't think it's going to be that area at the moment, but this is very close to that area. So how does this thing look in the upper levels? This is vorticity. It's essentially measuring the spin in the atmosphere. This really gives us a good indication of the storm. Here's your little, sh little wave right here. And, you know, more colors here, you know, as you get towards the 25, 40, 45 plus, that's indicating positive vorticity advection, which essentially means, or positive vorticity, which essentially means there's more spin, there's more lift in the atmosphere. You can see it really gets going here. 
and it really doesn't get going until it hits the Midwestern region, but very good positive vorticity advection here, which is going to enhance this storm. It's gonna send a response to the surface, and it's gonna kind of explode at the surface, get a really nice cold front, and a nice back-end snow threat uh, as we head towards Saturday. So again, when this happens, if this happens any earlier, which I don't think it will because of the, uh, I think the high pressure and the, the really strong snowpack out here is going to really shunt the cold air far south and really, really quickly. I don't think this thing's going to get quite organized until it hits the Midwestern region. But if it does happen earlier, that's going to put people in the Dakotas and Minnesota under the gun. So that's what the system's looking like. Now, we're going to zoom in here. This is Montana, Idaho, going to be patchy areas of snow, especially in the higher elevations. On the day on Wednesday, it could be a several inches in some areas. And then, uh, you know, here's your uh, surface analysis. Here's your low pressure system. And you can see the cold front near these thickness lines, kind of right in this area. You can see this gradient. This 540 blue line is where you're Average temperature in the atmosphere is 32 degrees, so you can kind of bet there's going to be snow north of that. And you can see it's pretty far detached from the low pressure system. But this cold air is going to be so fast that it's going to connect up with this low pressure system as it heads towards the plains. Now, watch what happens here. Boom. And you can see the uh, 540 system a little bit closer, but it's going to get even closer soon. And you can see these black isobars indicating lots of wind here. There's a very strong pressure gradient there. So even if there's not a whole lot of snow, there's going to be a lot of uh, cold air wind behind this thing. And we're talking a lot of cold air very rapidly. Here's the snow line. And now let me show you this real quick. Here's the rain snow line on the precipitation. This is for Thursday. Now we're going to go over, I'll draw that again. Try that again one more time. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to go over to the this is called the column max temperature. This blue line right here means that the maximum temperature in the atmosphere from the surface way up to about, I believe that's gonna go up to 500 on this map, it's gonna be 32 degrees. So that blue area, it's 32 degrees everywhere, which means frozen precipitation all throughout. The red line we just looked at was the rain snow line. So this area in between indicates that there could be above freezing temperatures somewhere in the atmosphere, but it's gonna be snowing, which indicates wet snow, which could melt a little bit. But there is wet snow in this area. So areas in this region during this time will be experiencing wet snow. Obviously, as we get closer, we can go into more detail with that. But areas out here, it's guaranteed you're gonna get snow uh, via this particular map. And then areas to the east, obviously, is gonna be rain. So that's what that's looking like. Now, the GEM, the, uh, which is the Canadian model, a lot less organized with the precipitation shield, still very strong. Cold air coming down to the south, a little batch of snow on the backside, but not quite as organized as the GFS. Now, also, you got a system out there, a tropical system out in the east, which is interesting. And then you got the GFS on the day on Saturday, and you can see this system really gets going. Here's your cold front, the kink in the isobars, thunderstorms right out ahead of it. Okay, and, th and then you can see this backside, this comma thing. Remember what I was talking about? The upper levels are starting to get its act together as, as it hits towards the Midwest. And that really sends up a signal up and sends down a signal to the surface and you get a really nice response very strong low pressure system starts to deepen and very heavy snow and strong winds in this area now this is starting to trend in this direction so we're definitely gonna have to watch this for you folks in southern canada uh, and then as the storm weakens that could send some back end snow into the farthest farthest part of the northern united states uh, as we head towards the weekend. So we're definitely going to have to watch the development of this thing. And you can zoom in here on the day Saturday, Friday actually, and here's your low pressure system. Your cold front's going to be right in those kinks. You can see that black isobar, that kink right there, and the storm systems are going to be blowing right up along that, thunderstorms likely, along that thing. And then behind it, some cold air, there's your 540 line. So your 540 line's too far to the west for any snow in this region at the moment. You're in the warm sector. But to the northwest, if there's enough moisture that can wrap around this thing, and if the cold air isn't too overpowering, sometimes too much cold, dry air is a problem, if that's the case, we're going to get some snow out here in your Minnesota region, maybe even 
into the uh, Wisconsin region. There's a lot of mid-level dry air that's getting punched into the Wisconsin region during this time, which could limit the precipitation just a little bit. However, that could change over time here. Now, this is a cross section. This essentially goes from North Dakota all the way out to Ohio. So it's, it's measuring essentially a distance from North Dakota to Ohio. Okay, that's so you can imagine North Dakota over here and Ohio over here. And you can see way up, and this is our going up inside the atmosphere, up top, and you can see the jet stream right here. These are the winds. You can see the core of the jet stream right here, 130, 140 miles an hour. And then your temperature gradient kind of down this area somewhere. So you can kind of see somewhere between North Dakota and Ohio is where you're going to get that. Uh, action and you know your storm systems are going to be pretty crazy in that area. So just thought I would show that. We'll probably use that tool more in the future. So here we go. This is going to be on Saturday. You can see that storm system moves to the east. Again, all rain for the northeastern United States. But once this cold air wraps around, there's going to be a shot very close to the northeast of some snow. Probably going to remain north, but definitely something to watch. Snowfall amounts by the GDPS, which is the Canadian kind of in this area really accumulating snow one inch or above again still far out this is going to change and i don't think it's going to be as much here in the dakotas i think that's it's it's really going to start to get organized more out in this region but nonetheless montana several inches and uh, the rockies as well and we'll zoom in here to the dakotas and you can see that look at this the canadian putting out a good six to eight inches again I think that's going to be overdone. There's going to get a lot of dry, cold air that's going to be coming down south very rapidly. But nonetheless, the models have trended up for snowfall. The GFS, pretty strong. It's actually even stronger. It's got 18 to 20 inches in parts of northern uh, North Dakota or so. And this area, the snowfall amount doesn't quite, it only goes out to you know a certain amount of hours. So it hasn't reached that area yet. But you'll definitely see more there in southern Canada than what this is showing. And you can zoom in here and you can see several inches up in the northern parts of North Dakota. Again, I think it's going to be less. It's probably going to be more of like a, a two to six inch event. Again, things are going to change. We'll have some updates on that in the future. But this is the area out here that I'm really going to want to watch is northern Minnesota, eastern part of North Dakota, and as you go into southern Canada, as this thing really starts to get organized. And then also out here in uh, in Montana, where a lot of cold air is already in place, and you're going to have higher elevation snowfall. Just as a, a fun little uh, reference here, this is the, the trends of by the GFS. This is a few runs ago. It was showing snow all the way down in Nebraska. A couple runs later, nothing. A couple runs later, northern parts of North Dakota. But nonetheless... I looked at the past like 10 runs and there's several runs now showing uh, some snow in this region. So definitely could be some snowfall. We'll definitely keep you updated. Uh, but again, this area out here is the area I'm really watching. And then also this area right here, there's probably going to be see, see a little bit of snow in that area as well. Now you look at this high pressure system out here in the low right here, and you can see that gradient, that pressure gradient. And that temperature gradient lines up right along it. These black lines are the isobars. So when you get them really tightly compact, there's very strong winds. So you're going to get very strong winds and a very rapid change in temperatures. Temperatures in the 70s out ahead of this thing, 60s out in maybe Minnesota, Iowa. Behind this, teens in parts of uh, the northwestern United States, but 20s and 30s as well. And watch this thing just crash. This is on the day Thursday. This is Friday. Look, I mean, we're talking 24 hours later. Actually, this is going to be 18 hours later. This is Friday morning. Here's the low pressure system. It goes way up to the north. This high pressure system blows this cold front, which was out in Colorado, all the way darn near the Gulf of Mexico. Very, very windy, cold conditions behind it, and 30 degree temperatures, 32 degree temperatures, maybe as far south as Nebraska, Iowa. Minnesota, maybe even into parts of Kansas, New Mexico. So that's very concerning. There might be a freeze with this. And then as you go towards the day on Saturday, around the, the uh, early morning, you can see this low pressure system kind of wraps up, starts to shear out a little bit in Canada. That could bring some uh, snow 
back far south again. And then very cold temperatures. It's actually indicating some freezing temperatures as far south as Missouri and Illinois. And then very cold temperatures behind this as well. And then you can see this cold front. It's already in the Gulf. So this thing will scorch out the moisture for a while with how fast that and rapid that thing is. So very crazy uh, little storm setup we got going here. Now, if you're still watching this, we got a segment called Warrior Weather Captures, Weather Warrior Captures. If you have any cool photos or videos, feel free to direct message me here or on the Forecast Warriors Facebook page or on the Weather Decoded Facebook page. We're going to have some segments where we showcase your photos and videos. And we're also going to make standalone videos as well, something I've been planning for a year or so. I just haven't been able to do this. And because we do have a, we're going to be putting these all on a map. So that's going to be kind of cool. So if you have them, just uh, let me know and we'll showcase your photos. And I've already showcased these. So with that said, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. Hit those bell notifications because we do go live. Hit that subscribe button because we also release daily forecasts, extreme weather forecasts, storm chasing, all sorts of stuff like that. And we really focus in on that two week range patterns, storm systems and stuff like that. So if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. Hope it helped you out and we'll see you soon.